Here's hey now. guys. And then there were four. Winnie's right there. There's Winnie. <laughs> There's not usually this many people sitting here. You can usually see her a little bit better. But now we have Charlotte Claire to introduce you to. Um, otherwise known as Cece, that's her nickname. Or Princess Angel Face if you're not into that whole brevity thing. <laughs> right, that's her other nickname. Um, she actually stole that nickname from Winnie, but now Winnie's Princess <laughs> Bunny Face. So it's fair. You gotta keep it clear. You gotta keep it clear. Charlotte was born on Monday, December 28th. Mm -hmm. 3.19 p.m. Yep, via C-section. We um, went in that day for a scheduled external version because she was breech. Um, I did a whole long explanation of the previous week and our kind of emergency run to the hospital where we thought we were going to have her on the 23rd. I will link that for you guys. I'm not going to go into all of that today. But basically, she was Frank Breach. They were watching my amniotic fluid levels because they were low. And we had a pretty strong feeling we were going to have her that day. Like that, we were prepared for that. So mm -hmm. we went to the hospital for that appointment with all of her stuff thinking that was the day. And it's a good thing we were prepared because it was the day. Um, so after we checked in at labor and delivery and they got me in a gown and all hooked up mm -hmm. to a, a, an IV, the IV worked better this time. <laughs> One first try. try. First try. Uh, and they got the baby monitor hooked up and they were monitoring her and she was all good. So um, they wanted to check my amniotic fluid levels again. Um, and I, it came back as a five. Uh, the reading was a five, which apparently is just on the borderline of um, low to normal. And my doctor had talked to the specialist on the floor. The I don't remember what kind of specialist it was, but whatever, Special. some some sort of specialist. And he said five is still considered low. It has to be over five. So at that point, we knew we were going to be delivering that day. Mm -hmm. We decided to still give the um, external version a try um, because everybody thought that would be okay, although we didn't have a lot of confidence in it. But if I had had a chance to labor and have a vaginal delivery, I wanted to have that chance. Um, so we did that. Don witnessed it. It was an interesting experience to say the least. It was not comfortable. I, I wouldn't say it was like supremely painful but it was really really uncomfortable the i mean so people understand what this is oh yeah you can explain <laughs> it a little i explained uh, it in that other video what it is is the doctor pushing on the baby from the outside to try to spin her around and so the our our doctor and one of the nurses no it was, was a resident OB. the resident ob was helping her um it was two of them pushing they're like pushing hard, like Dr. H is like really putting her back into it. Like I've got a picture of her whole self <laughs> trying to push that baby around. And apparently she was going easy because the low fluid levels yeah, make it a little harder to, to do it. anyway. So you didn't want to push it right. too hard, but that baby wasn't budging. So. <laughs> no, and we found out later that I knew I had a bit of a heart shaped uterus because from my fertility journey, I had come to know that. but. When my uterus was its normal size, or when it is its normal size, it's a very, very slight um, indentation at the top. A heart-shaped uterus just means it's not... Oh, are you waking up? Nope. Just <laughs> means it's not perfectly smooth at the top. There's a bit of an indent. But apparently, when my uterus expanded to accommodate this little peanut, um, it turned into a huge heart, like a big, big indent. So she was really wedged up in, like, if you can imagine a heart like one of the lobes of the heart. Her head was in one lobe and her little feet were in the other lobe, and sort there of was in no a jackknife. There was no moving her. <laughs> there was, and I had the feeling that she was pretty wedged in there. So at that point, we knew that we were heading into a C-section um, and they were ready for us immediately. It wasn't an emergency, but we I was already on the IV and hydrated. I had fasted all day and you know, I was we were ready. So we just mm -hmm. went right into it. Um, so they gave Don some scrubs and he got all scrubbed up mm -hmm. and I got a, a really attractive hairnet <laughs> and, um, uh oh, did mommy laugh and it scared you? Yeah. It was probably gas. Mm, probably gas. Um, I basically walked down to the OR with the nurses and my doctor. They all paraded me down to the, to the operating room, which was in the labor delivery ward. Um, and then, and Don was... 
you didn't come with me for the mm. first 20 minutes you were yeah, like they escorted me to the waiting room right. while they were prepping you in the OR and you were like brought the stuff down to recovery or something or stuff or did the nurse yeah no I brought yeah that's why I was yeah. waiting yeah the that, recovery, not the waiting room. Not the waiting room. He the was in recovery room, was until thinking. I was all prepped up and they brought him in when I was right before they started the surgery. So I can tell you what happened. I have a very clear memory of what happened. It was a very kind of surreal experience and it still feels like very kind of out of body dream like. Like I was totally um, aware, I had total consciousness. Um, I walked into the OR. There was my delivery nurse who had been with me since I checked in. She was there the whole time. They had the OR nurse, and then they had the um, my doctor, my OB was there. The resident OB who was going to help with the surgery because it's a, we delivered at a teaching hospital. The anesthesiologist was there, and the anesthesiologist resident was there. Um, and again, it was a teaching experience. So the residents did most of the work and the doctors really just supervised. Although I'm pretty sure during the surgery, it was kind of like 50-50. But for the anesthesia part, the resident did the whole thing and the anesthesiologist just supervised. Um, and she did a great job. I sat on the operating table. I leaned against my doctor, my OB, and kind of, you have to kind of curl over. And they prepped this area, they cleaned it the spine, they did a spinal tap, so I was completely without feeling from my rib cage down to my toes, although I still had some sense of feeling, but there was no like real sensation, I guess. Um, the only part I felt from that whole experience was like a bit of a sting when they first put the needle in, and I think that was like a numbing agent they put in first. That's all I felt, it was just like, it was like if a little bug bit you. Um, and the spinal tap went into effect pretty soon after, and it started working really well, <laughs> fortunately. Um, so after they got that all set up, um, they hooked me up to a blood pressure monitor, and they put these like electrode things on my chest to like, I guess, monitor my heart rate and vitals and things. I don't really know, doctor stuff. Um, and I laid down on the operating table, which was actually quite narrow, and it like tilted. So I thought that was kind of interesting, and I had my arms out on these boards. Now I thought they strapped down your arms, but I don't think they strapped down my arms. I just never moved them. I could feel my arm. I mean, I could move my arms. Were they strapped down? I didn't notice. I had the impression that they were. I think they just put blankets on top of them. M maybe that was it. Because I don't. When I, when we were done, I don't remember them unstrapping them. Mm. Anyway, the whole you definitely didn't move them. <laughs> the whole time, everybody was very chatty and very pleasant. Um, and we were talking about like the best deep dish pizza places in Chicago. It was it was very weird. Um, I didn't really feel nervous at all. It was just kind of strange. It was just kind of a weird experience. So all that all that prep, they scrubbed my belly, they cleaned me down, they did all this stuff. I don't really know. I couldn't you know really see what was happening. That all took about 20 minutes and at that point yeah. they put the curtain up and they invited Don in and they also invited the team of NICU doctors in um, because... The, the curtain is a curtain that goes right here and blocks her view from the surgery. Yeah, and blocks your is view that basically. Obvious? Oh, I don't, I, I don't know. the curtain is. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> um, well, that's at that point they invited Don in, like I said, and the team of NICU doctors, I don't know if they just bring the NICU doctors in when it's like a, fr a breach situation or if they bring them in for every C-section. It's just to make sure the baby is okay. They have a special team that just checks her out right away. Um, and they started operating and it was only three minutes. I actually, the delivery nurse afterwards when I was in recovery, um, went over the timeline with me of events so I could know like, cause I was curious just how long everything took. So it was only three minutes from the time they made the incision to when um, Cece was born. Yeah. So that was, that was pretty fast. Quick, quick. Um, and she came out very quiet mm -hmm. and very hairy <laughs> and very sweet. Yes. And they, the NICU doctors took her right away over to the side. Um, in the operating room they had one of those table warmer things. Mm -hmm. And they, what did they do? I couldn't really see because I was like on the table. I was craning my neck yeah. to see. But what did they do? All sorts of stuff. Cleaned her up and poked her and 
stuff. They like checked her leg. They wanted to check yeah. her legs and her hips yeah. because she. They had do been the free. Apgar test. To remember, there's like five or six. Oh yes. Things. I think there's five things. Two points. To do it at one minute she and was, at five minutes. She was a nine at one and a nine at five, which is already good. exceeding, good. exceedingly. Yeah. Mm hmm I don't know what the right word is. Good. Good. Yes. <laughs> um. So all this time, Don was able to, you know, kind of like float around behind them and check her out. He took a lot mm, of pictures. pictures. I couldn't really move because they were putting me back. They were first taking the placenta out and then they were putting me back <laughs> together again, like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> um, but I just remember my neck, like I was craning my neck yeah. to see. And I, my neck was so sore because it took about 20 minutes to finish the operation. It only took three minutes to get her out, but then it took about 20 minutes to like put Humpty Dumpty Stitching back, back together again. <laughs> um, but my neck hurts so you bad, but I just really <laughs> wanted to see her. Um, and then they weighed her, mm -hmm. six pounds, six ounces at birth, 20 inches long. Mm -hmm. So pretty long for her size at two weeks early in her weight. I, I get the impression that she's kind of on the longer side for her comparative size. Yeah. Yeah, Nick was saying that that stuff isn't very accurate. We were talking about it oh, yesterday. Oh, the um, averages? The length. Well, like the way, you know, they measure from head to rump or whatever, or, or they go around. Maybe it is, it, what is 20 inches? It's to her feet. But they, she's squirming around so much while they're trying to measure. It's pretty hard to get it accurate and like the sm an inch changes what percentile you're in That's true. massively. She so. does seem long to me though yeah. because although she's very le she's very lean, she definitely fits in newborn stuff but at length she's kind of maxing out at length but at width she's not. Um, so I think she is kind of on the longer side. Um, at her first doctor's appointment one week after, at one week old, she uh, measured in at 20.8 inches. So I don't know mm -hmm. if that's more accurate. I don't know. I'm just probably just as wiggly then. Yeah. Um, but anyway, like I said, it took about 20 minutes. They did a whole bunch of stuff. And then the, the doctors probably only looked at her for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then they yeah. handed her to Yeah, I mean, you. they were done before I was you done. were done. Yeah. So they handed her to Don, and he, he held her close to my face so I could see her. I really couldn't touch her or anything or hold her yet because they were, you know, stitching me up. Um... But that was really sweet, and it's again, it's just like I have a very clear memory of everything that happened, and it just feels kind of like an out of body experience because it was just kind of weird. Because you were on a lot of drugs? No, I, I wasn't on any <laughs> drugs that affected my brain. The spinal tap doesn't affect your brain, that's the only drug I was on. The IV is oh. just fluid. <laughs> yeah. What drugs? Well you had a spinal tap that's gonna whatever <laughs> yeah it doesn't affect your brain though it's gonna if you can't feel yourself from your chest down you're gonna feel like you're having an out of body oh, experience I see what like you what, mean. what i see what, what, what you're okay, talking fine. about okay fine i didn't know what you meant <laughs> anyway after all that i think i was in the or for about 70 minutes total from start to finish they brought all of us out to recovery um, and they got me kind of propped up, and at that point, I could finally hold CC, mm -hmm. uh, which was so, so special. And I got to try breastfeeding a little bit, which was interesting. <laughs> I don't know if it really worked that first time. <laughs> but, you know, it well, was skin to skin, and, you know, got, got our bonding. It did what it was supposed to do. Yes. It's not, yeah. And um, I was in recovery for a long time. So the recovery is just like this little area outside the OR where you... You're basically in a bed and your delivery nurse watches you for a couple of hours just to make sure there's no complications with the anesthesia wearing off and you know pain management and stuff like that mm -hmm. so we decided to kind of accelerate the getting moving on process by um i spent a little while holding cc but then we decided to send her up to mother and the, the mother and baby floor with dawn for her first official bath and like kind of check and stuff mm -hmm. upstairs. Um, so I wasn't there for that. Do you want to describe what they did? Um, they bathed her, <laughs> <laughs> checked her blood sugar. Uh, first they had to get her up to temperature. Um, before they do the bath, they got to be hot enough. Right. She was like just not quite hot enough, yeah. which made them want to check her blood sugar, which was perfectly fine. 
and then she got hot enough and they cleaned her. She didn't like the bath. She didn't, it was pretty <laughs> funny to see her when they started ba bathing her, which is really like a, Squirt. it's a sponge, sponge bath. Yeah. But she did this like really long, silent, <laughs> rage, gearing up into her cry and like her whole body just watched it turn one shade darker red, another shade darker red, another shade darker red. Not a fan. Like, Not a fan. She was extremely red. But, but then was, she was fine. Then she was fine. Yeah, no, and then, then she let go and then returned to her normal color very, very shortly thereafter. He took lots of pictures and was texting me pictures. then so I could see because I was just sitting in recovery. Yeah. Like, And actually, while I was sitting there just with the nurse and they were upstairs, I was writing down my um, delivery experience in my journal because I wanted to remember it. And that was the... Um, that was the thing to do, I guess, at the time. Mm -hmm. Do you want to switch? My arm's getting tired. Sure. Give me a match. Okay. I got it. Okay. Whew. Mm -hmm. She's going to want to eat very soon. Okay. Whew. Anyway, after that, um, she stayed in the nursery after her bath for a little bit. They wanted to watch her a little mm -hmm. bit, right, to make sure she was maintaining a correct temperature or whatever. So Don Sorry. came back down, gathered up our stuff, mm -hmm. and he came, they wheeled me up to um, mother and baby, like in the bed, and he came too. So I didn't move, obviously. I wasn't allowed to get on my feet until the next day. Um, so they wheeled me up in the elevator, and we got all settled in our room and on the mother and baby floor. Mm -hmm. And um, the nurse, you know, they checked us in. They went over everything. They went over my medications. Like, they got me off. They started checking me right away, my incision and stuff. Um, this part is a little fuzzy because I was just like, I want my baby back. <laughs> um, so I don't, I want my baby I don't really remember a lot of what back. happened in the checking in process, but it's not that exciting anyway. We basically just got settled. And they, fin they finally brought my baby back. And we tried breastfeeding yes. again. And breastfeeding, it's, you know, it's a, it's been a challenge, but I've obviously been doing a pretty good job because she is gaining weight like a champ. Mm -hmm. She actually had, in you know, most babies, actually all babies lose weight after they're born. They can lose up to 10% of their birth weight and that's considered like normal. Yeah. I think like they expect them to lose 10%. Right, so yeah. she got down to I think 8%. She only lost 8% and, and even gaining. started, so she even good. gained an ounce back before we left. So we were at the hospital from Monday through Friday. So we were there for five full days. So it's four days after delivery. And by Friday, on Thursday she was down to five pounds, 14 ounces, but on Friday she was back up to five pounds, 15 ounces. And that was her weight when we checked out. Um, so they were very pleased with that. Um, and the, I mean, that, the stay in the hospital to me was just absolutely wonderful. I know a lot of people talk about wanting to go home desperately, really missing home, really wanting to not be in the hospital that long. I actually really enjoyed being mm -hmm. in the hospital. I mean, poor Don barely fit on the little like quasi air mattress bed thing they provided him, but he, wasn't so comfortable. The he trick, it out. the trick was uh, only sleeping ten minutes the first night, yes. so that I was sufficiently sleep de sleep deprived oh. the future nights that it was then easy to fall asleep. That's right. The first night was really rough, actually, um, for both of us. But not for the baby so much. No, the baby it, slept great. You were in pain, and I couldn't get comfortable. But the yes. baby was the just baby an was angel. fine. <laughs> Um, I had a lot of pain the first night and they ended up having to adjust my dose of um, pain medication accordingly. Um, and the, but then it got a little bit better every day and by the time we were discharged I was really feeling very little pain. Um, but the first night was tough. I didn't sleep at all for like 24 yeah. hours. Yeah. But more than that. Yeah. I, I'm, I got literally 10 minutes. You I got, got zero. zero minutes. <laughs> the next night we were so exhausted. Like we, I had wanted to keep her in the room with us at, at all possible. Um, of course, they took her every night for checks, but then they would bring her right back if um, we wanted her. Yeah. But we were just so exhausted the second night that we decided to send her. It was like 11 or 12 yeah. at night and the nurse came in and was like, are you sure you don't want us to keep her after her check? And I was like, well. And that was the like, way yes. That, yes. <laughs> I like how you say we decided. <laughs> but, <laughs> 
Um, Jennifer was not gonna let that baby go. But no. Once I was so tired. Once though. she's sufficiently sleep deprived, she's yes. more susceptible to suggestion. I mean, it had been like 40 hours since I'd slept awake. Yeah, it's like, honey, let the nice nurse take the baby. <laughs> so she only went for six hours. Yeah. And they brought her back like midway to breastfeed. Um, but I got six hours of sleep that night, and I think Don got like eight. Yeah. So that worked out well because then we had something we to go back. on. Yeah. I really didn't sleep much at all that first week in the hospital because I really did want to keep her with us. Um, we sent her to the nursery one other time, I think just for it was four only for hours. A couple hours, yeah. Um, less maybe that was like Thursday night. I can't yeah. remember. But um, I just really wanted her with me and. Um, so I didn't sleep very much. I think I slept, I think I, I added it up between Monday and Friday, I slept a total of 12 hours, yeah. <laughs> like total. But I, I made sure that Don got some rest because I knew that he would, I would need him during mm -hmm. the day to be, you know, helpful, mm -hmm. which he has been extremely helpful. And like I said, I just really enjoyed staying at the hospital. I felt like really taken care of. I felt really secure and safe there. Um, I liked that I was being checked. I liked that she was being checked. I liked that we didn't have to worry about stairs or dishes or food. You know, everything was provided. Um, I didn't have to think about anything. And um, it was just really nice as we transitioned from never being parents before to now being parents and learning how to feed and take care of this child to have that support. So to me, mm -hmm. it was time well spent in the hospital. And I, I definitely, I wouldn't say like I like love like I so enjoyed it, but I like I needed it. Mm. Um, uh, by Friday, I was, I guess I was ready to go home. I was a little little sad to leave the hospital, to be honest. But I was I was ready to bring her home and introduce her to her home. It was nice to come home on New Year's Day. Yeah, we came home on New Year's Day, so we started the year out at home as a family of four. That includes this one. Oh, I know I'm going to get asked how the meeting between, can you hear you, between Winnie and um, Cece went. She's like, what? And we actually filmed, we filmed it, and I'm going to insert that clip here, because I just, mm, it was cute. cute, and I was, I don't want to say I was like really shocked, but I was pleasantly surprised how Winnie dealt with meeting Cece, and also how she's just been so good. She's been just such a good girl, mm -hmm. so vigilant and protective and sweet. Um, so I'll insert that footage here for you guys. Good girl, Winnie. Good job. Good girl. 
She's like, oh, the jig is up. <laughs> Princesses all in a bed. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Good girl. Oh good. That's a good sign. End scene. That's where she. That's her sign. Yeah, that's her sign. All right. End scene. And now we've been home for a full week and a bit, and we're still adjusting, but we're doing pretty well. I've definitely been able to get some more sleep. I'm been getting about six hours total a night. Not all at once, obviously, but in fits, I suppose. <laughs> um, and she's doing great. She's growing like a champ. I think I will do um, some sort of postpartum updates if you guys are interested, where I'll talk about more about my experience, you know, as a new mom with a newborn, recovering from a C-section. I can do a separate video for that because this is already pretty long. Um, if you're interested, let me know. Um, I think I probably will do that. And also, uh, I realized that Don and I never got to film our last pregnancy Q&A that I've been promising because yeah. we delivered a couple weeks early and I had been we're waiting. We're not pregnant anymore. Yeah, well, we're not pregnant anymore. So I thought instead we would do like a new parents Q&A. Um, and it can include questions, if you guys want to ask questions about pregnancy as well as for Don or for me and Don, um, that would be fine. But also as new, new parent questions, if you want to leave those questions below, we'll try to film that video in the next couple of weeks for you guys. Um, so leave your questions below if you'd like to ask something about that. But I hope you enjoyed meeting our little girl. Um, I'll, yeah, I'm going to put in a little close-up of her. I wish she could her. see her cute little faces. I'm going to put a close-up of her in because she's just so darling. But I've been posting, I've been trying to post um, once a day on my social media, kind of little updates for you guys. So you can check me out, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they all get the same um, updates. But um, yeah, here we are, the Rosses. The Rosses. 2.0. Mm-hmm. 4.0. <laughs> 4.0. Come here, Bunch Jan, you have to be in this. Come here. I can't really lift you. Okay, all right. I lift you anyway. I'm very bad at that. Yeah, it's all of us. All of us together. <laughs> thank you for watching and thank you guys so much for all of your really kind words and congratulations and well wishes that you've left on my social media in the comments. I just appreciate it so much. We feel very blessed by all of the love and support um, from our family, from our friends, and from you guys. So thank you so much and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye! Bye. Take care, you guys. Thanks for watching. And that's a wrap. Are you the best guard doggy in the world? In the world? She's like, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Okay. <laughs>